So we've got the holes drilled, now I'm ready to use the template. We've got the double sided tape on the back. I'm just going to use the drill bit to line it up. And apply some pressure, make sure that it holds, and then you're ready to router. The next step, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drilling a hole on each side. You really only need one side, but I'm going to drill a hole on each side. This is going to be 2364 for the screw end of our bolts to connect together. These are on the side pieces as you can tell by the pre-drilled holes right here and this will actually go down through here and the bolt will go through the leg itself and attach. Like I said you only really need one side but I like to drill both sides just in case you ever have to switch something around. This next step is very important to do together if you can. What you're going to be doing is, I measured up 15 inches, that's where my pivot point is going to be. At 15 inches, I put all four pieces together, and I'm going to drill them all at the same time. That way, they have the exact same pivot point. Alright, so what I've done is I've already drilled the pivot points, and re-drilled the inside two legs where the larger portion of the bolt is going to be attached at. I put them together here as a rough fit just to make sure everything works out perfect, everything lines up. It's got a nice rounded over edge here. Next step we're going to do is to cut down this 36 inch piece of 3 quarter inch oak rod. And what I do is I just cut it straight down the middle. I'm going to have it about a sixteenth of an inch shorter on each side top and bottom which will help me with warpage of the wood in case it doesn't sit perfectly as you can see here there's roughly just a little bit bigger gap here than there is down here so this will just help me center it up and make sure that if anything ever does warp it will still have clearance to open and close so now I got this all mocked up I just finished cutting the three quarter inch rods they ended up going down to 17 inches and 7 eighths of an inch which is exactly what I wanted. Next thing I'm going to do before I glue these together is I'm going to pull this all apart making sure I know which side is which and I'm going to fully sand down inside because once you put these rods in it's going to be really difficult to get these inner sections here and make it look nice. So you want to sand it down before you glue it together and I'm also going to put in a couple brad nails just to hold it and keep the rod from twisting which is very common on other models of TV trays. All right, so I've sanded everything down on the inside. What I'm going to do is use some tight bond wood glue and I'm going to put a little drop on the inside. And as I put the wood in, I'm going to rotate it to spread it out. I've already test fit everything, so there shouldn't be any clearance issues whatsoever. And you want to get a wet rag and wipe off any excess glue that came out on the other side before it dries. Once you have it nice and flush, you can put a brad nail in it. But I'll add one on the other side once I get this all fully together. Next I'm going to be working on the center section. Now I've already cut it out and routed it out and marked these in the previous section of this video. So now I need to pre-drill dead center three inches on both of these pieces so that I don't run the risk of splitting any of the wood. So I've already marked it out and I'm just going to pre-drill my hole. Now that I've got it pre-drilled, I can grab my screw 
and put it in place. That way it's easier for mock-up when I'm going to be pre-drilling these holes to make it work onto the top piece of the tray. Now don't be surprised if you're using two inch screws it's going to pop out just a little bit. And the reason I do this is because I actually want to leave a mark. It helps me when I'm placing it in place to hold it down onto the top piece while I'm screwing these in. Now that you have your center section done and your legs are still drying, the last thing for you to really do is to give each piece a really good sanding. What I like to do is I'll sand each individual piece and then when I put them back together I will give them another sanding to make sure that everything is even and matches as far as size wise in case anything was a little off because this wood when you buy it it's not always the same size I've noticed it's between a sixteenth off just about every single time so give everything a good sanding put it together give it another sanding and then we'll be ready for stain and the finish so now I have everything set up for the pre mock up stage what I'm doing is I'm using the screw that is already poked out of the other side as a reference to exactly where I need to go. Since my measurements were in the dead center, all I need to do is measure 12 inches from each side and I get a standard point. And then I'm going to measure in an inch and a half to this point right here. Using the plywood, an inch and a half in, not the outside trim. After I clamp down the cross brace, now all I need to do is pre-drill my holes so that I can put the screws in. Since it's clamped, I don't have to worry about it going anywhere. It's already screwed in place and because it's routered to overlap the piece of wood, I don't have to worry about it twisting on me. And you can release your clamp and the cross brace is set up. Now it's nice and sturdy. And all you need to do once you put your legs in is unscrew this. You can put the crossbar in there, screw it back on and it will be secured. The trick to getting the legs lined up perfectly and in the correct position is to assemble them and use the rod all the way up against this piece of wood. Then you measure in, make sure it's even both directions. Obviously you're only going to be able to go up as far as this piece of wood if you made any mistakes. But if your measurements are correct, it should be correct. You just measure in, make sure it's even from front to back, left to right, and that's all you need to do. Thanks for watching part two of this three part video build series on how to build a TV tray. In the next video I will show you how I modify the bottoms of the legs for the TV tray and how I like to do the finishing on this project. If you have any comments or questions please leave them down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Subscribe to my page to see more upcoming projects to include part three of this build series. Thanks for watching this video.